From the Zoomerplex in historic Liberty Village, The Zoomer, hosted by Marissa Lennox. Well, welcome to The Zoomer. I'm Marissa Lennox. Tonight it is all about pets. While we're familiar with the joy and the companionship they bring, have you ever considered the science behind it? From enhancing your health to adding more years to your life, it may not just be a feeling. There actually is real research to back it up, so we'll talk about that. We've even got a pet psychic in the mix who claims to know your pet's thoughts. It's intriguing, right? So let's get to it. We've got a great panel here in studio and also remote for a discussion I'm very, very much looking forward to. Dr. Daly, I'm going to begin with you because you spend a lot of time researching the relationship between pets and humans. And so my question is, are pets the answer to aging? Oh, that's a good question. And, you know, it's really interesting because whenever I hear that the, uh, the science, that it's been proven that pets are good for us, in fact, most of the research is actually anecdotal. And I really do think that when you ask people if they love their pet more than they love their partner. Um, I, I agree. I think there are a lot of people who might hesitate before saying, <laughs> before choosing their answer. But when we look at an aging population, I have a colleague who's done some research in this. And, and the truth is the problem with pets is that we want the seniors love them. They want them around and they, um, as we get older, it becomes more difficult to take care of them. So whether or not they're the answer to longevity, it becomes a, a problem for a lot of people. But there is some new evidence that um, does seem to suggest that indeed people who have a pet um, do uh, do seem to do better. They do seem to live longer. They, they have um, different health benefits, particularly dogs and walking. That's one of the best ways to mitigate uh, seniors' um, old age effects. Well, let me just ask, because I also have seen some studies that suggest that being around pets can lower your blood pressure. Where, where does the science la land on that? That's interesting. There was a study done about 25 years ago um, by Erica Friedman, and that study has not really been replicated, but it was an incredibly, uh, an incredible breakthrough study. But we know also that um, when we sit with pets, when we pet them, our blood pressure goes down. We feel better. People who are having a crisis will say, when my dog is around or my cat is around, I feel better. They understand me. So the science is very vague. The science is opaque. I think part of the reason is the, the field of anthrozoology, which looks at these relationships, is still relatively new. And these are longitudinal studies. So it will, it will be very interesting to see the kind of research that's coming out in the next five or 10 years as the academic areas start to pick up in this area as well. Well, I am certain that everyone at the panel can speak to the anecdotal, indeed in our audience too. But Rodney, let me go with you next because who do you have here? I have Harlow here. And, and um, tell me a little bit about Harlow and corporate canine therapy. Um, Harlow is a 11 year old American Great Dane. Uh, we started corporate canine therapy after working as a volunteer at Sick Kids with St. John Ambulance Therapy Services. And we just saw a niche in the market that required therapy dogs. We started with three teams and all of our teams are owner owned dogs. And at this point, uh, we're just over 70 working teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have the clinical background per se, but we see every day the benefits of how therapy dogs help humans and kids and other dogs and in all kinds of areas. We'll get to some of those stories in a little bit. Absolutely. Cheryl, you've also brought someone, a charming addition to this panel. Who's this? This is Micah. Micah is a nine-year-old mini Bernie Doodle. And how does Micah influence your daily life? Oh my goodness, in every single way. Um, <laughs> I guess the most important way that he influences my life is I have to walk him four times a day. And when I say I have to walk him, it gets me outside. It gets me to talk to my neighbors. It gets me to get to know my community, get to know the neighborhood. And honestly, without a dog, I don't think I'd be outside as much. I don't think I'd be talking to as many people. And so uh, I was just joking with somebody earlier that um, I know 100 dogs in my area, in my neighborhood. 
I think I know two people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's changed my life. <laughs> Angel, you're a pet psychic. I am. What is a pet psychic, and, and how does that help you understand the animal-human relationship? So pet psychics are also known as animal communicators, and that's just what we do. We communicate with animals. Um, as human beings, we're incredibly tangible. We need to see, we need to feel, but on that tangible level. We take it one step further. We understand that there's a, an ability to communicate on many, many levels. Uh, the mental, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. And I think that really speaks to what we've been talking about because with aging, um, animals will keep our vibrations high, right? It gets us out, but it keeps that happy and that joy. And we all know that there are those little neurons in our brain, those happy neurons in our brain that as long as they're active, we're active. And I think that the scientific and the technical and the esoteric have to work together. Mm -hmm. So this beautiful young doctor's um, information and the work I do really complement each other. So this is how we work. We work in the world of animal communications, but we bridge into to this world, be that UN interpreter, so to speak. We will get some insight into that in a little bit, but when we return, an extraordinary tale, a dog, a medical miracle, and a life saved. Next. That man's best friend can sniff out bombs, drugs, and pursue suspects, but they're becoming frontline warriors in the battle against human disease, and Cheryl, your firsthand experience with this perfectly exemplifies it. Go take us back to that moment, because Micah here wasn't even trained, and yet with just the nose was able to detect something was wrong. What yeah. happened? So Micah and I have been I'll call it a couple, um, for nine years. And I'm a type two diabetic. Um, for the most part, I have good control over my blood sugar, but there was a time not too long ago that I was on the couch and I could tell my blood sugar was dropping and dropping precipitously, like just absolutely, my heart rate was going, I was flushed, I was sweating, but I was at home. Micah, who never sits away from me, he always sits beside me, got up off the couch and walked across the room and stared at me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, I can't talk to you right now. I can't do anything with you right now. I've got to deal with what's going on. And he, get, he came closer. When I didn't correct him or I didn't change anything, he came closer. And I'm like, Micah, I can't do anything right now. I just, I, I've got to... And then he came really close. And again, we've been together for nine years. He never does this. He pawed at me. He pawed at me. Basically, get up, do something, mom. There's something going on. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm frightened. I don't know. And so I got up and I had some juice. My blood sugar went back um, to where it should be normally. And then I looked up online to just kind of figure out what was that. And I figured out and I was told that that was a natural alert. Mm. So he was alerted to the fact that there was something wrong. He may not have known exactly what it was, he didn't know what the scent was, but he knew something was wrong and he wanted my attention. And so once I gave him, I got the drink and once I got it my attention, it, once I gave him the attention, he relaxed. Would you have gone through those steps if not for Micah? I don't know that I would have necessarily recognized that I was going that low because I've been diabetic most of my life, but I don't know if I would have recognized I was that low in the moment. Yeah. Because when it comes on, it just comes on. And if anybody who's ever been diabetic, sometimes you just don't recognize when it's happening. You're just like, oh, I feel a little bit of dizzy. I feel a little bit. He knew something was going on. So Dr. Daly, it's pretty incredible. And I see you nodding your head. I know you've done a lot of research into this area, um, but are we looking at a future where pets, even without formal training, will play a more integral role in preventative health care? This this is an extraordinary story. And I'm looking at this this dog, Micah. I mean, what a gorgeous, perfect little little creature. And I, it's it's such a blessing to have um, these animals in our lives. And you can take all the uh, science you want and say, well, you know, this isn't quite proven. But anecdotally, anyone will tell you that uh, so many of these things are 
are are true. The, the science is there anecdotally. And when I hear the uh, the, the smell issue, the um the the dogs predicting seizures, dogs predicting a dropping in blood sugar, this is very well supported. And one of the biggest areas of study, of course, over the last several years has been COVID. And dogs actually are better at sniffing, at detecting COVID than the tests are that, that we've been taking, those awful little swabs. Um, and so it's remarkable. A dog can smell. There was a study done. Um, there's a book written about smell that anybody with a dog should read, but you will never want to walk your dog again. Because Alexandra Horowitz wrote this book, and she says, you need to let your dog stop and sniff. This is how they see the world. Dogs can sniff one trillionth of a scent. Out, uh, they, they did the study where they had um, big vats of water and put a drop of a banana smell in it, and the dogs can find it. Um, we know that they can sniff out COVID. We know that we, we hear about all these cancer um, sniffing dogs and cats and cats. I'm, I'm in fairness, I teach a course on dogs, so so I, my research is a little bit more um, in that in that area. But this, I, I think that it's kind of a no-brainer. Every time we go through customs now at airports, dogs are everywhere. And it seems to me that this is going to be one of the most um, progressive areas for determining people um, people's health issues, as well as for our own public safety, airports, uh, bomb sniffing dogs from COVID sniffing dogs. I'd actually like to add to that as well, that it's also mental health issues that animals are really great with. Um, at the beginning of my career, this was shocking to me. I was with a family and their son was there. And this was a bird uh, that lived in his room. This was this was his, his pal, his buddy. And we were talking and this bird at one point went, don't tell him to go, or sorry, tell him not to go, tell him not to go. And this bird kept saying this. And he was gonna go off to university, so this is, and then all of a sudden the bird said, don't die. And it was like, what? And all of a sudden the family looked at him and he just went, pale and they said is there something you want to tell us and all the bird kept saying was please don't die and it was like oh my god and it turned out that he'd had really dark thoughts and I'm like you know what you guys may need to have a family chat about this and I was trying to be very um, diplomatic. I'm the kind of reader that I will give you the information, but it will be very diplomatically. Uh, after a few weeks, we touched base with that family and the boy was in therapy. The boy had a lot on his chest, a lot of things that had happened in his life. He just needed to talk about it, right? And I find with teenagers as well as older people, animals on so many levels connect to us. It's just about acknowledging it. It's about dismissing it. Like people look at me and go, oh, you're so special. Guess what? I'm not. Mm -hmm. We. This is a natural part of who we are to be able to sense our dogs and go, okay, they're trying to tell us something and feel what they're feeling. Cause it's all about that, follow that feel. I know you have a lot of experience with this. I do. Talk about some of the stories. What are some of the things that your dogs are able to detect? Uh, well, just personally with myself, um, Harlow, when she was first, when she was around one or two years old, I suffered a great deal with anxiety. Mm -hmm. So when I would have a panic attack, she would come and be what's called a high pressure dog. She would basically throw herself at me and push against me to calm me and keep me in a place where I didn't go beyond, um, which is an amazing thing. Um, but things that I've seen her do at sick kids are unbelievable. Um, children who had infantile leukemia, who were absolutely distraught and the families were distraught. She had the innate ability to calm them and to take them down. And um, to Cheryl's thought, I've worked with dogs who are diabetic seizure work, uh, warning dogs, cardiac um, dogs who can sense cardiac arrhythmias and different things. And, and That's incredible. Yeah, and we've seen in the 10 to 15 years that I've been doing this work, countless, countless episodes of dogs being able to help humans in this way. So we absolutely believe that they're going to help medically and uh, because we see it all the time. And the animals remember their people too, the people that they've connected with, those kids at sick kids. Oh yeah, I've had therapy dogs as clients and they've come to me and they're like, and they'll show me the image of a child or, or an older person who's passed or what have you. And they'll ask, what happened to? Or I remember this person. And they're just people that they connect to. So they remember. So this is interesting to me because she worked in palliative. Right. And so do you think that she has 
memory and trauma from that perspective? No, so it's not memory and trauma. It's like you and I. So when you and I are helping people, we may feel the situation, but okay. we go away feeling rewarded, Got it. right? So a lot of times, is there sadness? Absolutely, like if their favorite person passes away, right? Or they're, they're gonna feel as well, like elephants feel when, they're, when their own offspring pass. So yeah, they feel it, but they also understand this is my job, right? This is who I am, and we're built that way. The way you're built is gonna give you the tools that you require to do your job. All right, we need to take a quick breather, but stay with us because right after the break, we're jumping right back into our pet talk. survey of pet owners, one third of respondents said they get more joy from seeing their pet happy than their partner. And half said they would actually give up romance for a year if it meant that their pet could live an extra year. Dr. Daly, we have discussed health and longevity. Let's shift our focus to the emotional side. <laughs> Maybe true. Let's shift our focus to the emotional now. side. That's, um... It, that's it's fascinating. I, I have a colleague who who um, the, his joke was they did a study of how many people talk to their pets, and it was something like ninety six percent. So the conclusion was four percent of people are liars, and I always think about that. But the um, the, the overwhelming response from people who can who would choose their dog over a romantic partner, who would choose their dog. Um, over a, a, some kind of a comfort is not at all a surprise. And we've seen this in the literature on, for instance, homeless people and their pets. They will always be sure that their dog is well cared for, their dog is fed, their dog is taken care of, even if they themselves have no food, don't take care of themselves, are in peril. And there's currently um, the street veterinarian, I'm sure a lot of people are following on Instagram. And he, he said the same thing. He said, I've never seen such well taken care of animals. These are people who are living in in terrible conditions. They they don't have a home. Um, they they you know they don't have shelter. They don't have food. But they make sure their dog is well cared for. So when you ask somebody, would you have your pet for an extra year if you could go? Uh, uh, if you could have your pet for an extra year, would you go without romance for a year? I think a lot of people would say I'd go without romance for five years if I could have my pet for an extra day. Um, we, we love our animals the, the way that we love children. And a lot of people that will also say that when their dog dies, they have um, felt a lot of guilt because they felt worse when their dog died or when their pet died than when their parents died, their elderly parents. And so um, there are, there's a, so much to unpack here. But the one thing I just always keep coming back to is these are our children. These are our family members. And um, I, I'm one thing that, that we're very fortunate about in our society is that we're starting to recognize that. And um, people are starting to realize how important these animals are to us. I won't ask you the romance question, Rodney. I appreciate that with my wife behind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> but, but I have heard you refer to Harlow as your soul dog. What does that mean? To well, me, Harlow and I have done so much work together and I know that she's connected to me beyond the level of a pet. We, we share this symbiotic relationship that she trusts me and I trust her implicitly. And for the work that we do, um, more the work that we did in hospitals, we had to. Um, now when we do corporate visits, they're nice, they're a little bit different, they don't require the same bond, but the bond can't be broken. I am famous for saying um, she diagnosed my mom on her deathbed the night she died. And it will be harder. This is an 11 year old Dane. I mean, it will be harder to lose her than my mom, without question. Mm. Um, I can see you getting emotional. I am. Of I'm like terribly. Of course. Uh, this Absolutely. dog is well beyond where she should be as a great Dane. And every day that I have with her is a gift. And my family knows when we lose Harlow, I'm done for three months. Don't come talk to me. Leave me alone. We have another great Dane at home. I have a great bond with him, but it's not the same. And all I hear Harlow saying is, Ugh, don't worry about it. It's not going to happen right now. We're good. <laughs> She's like, she doesn't even think about it. Yeah. She doesn't even think about it. That's that was my next getting. question yeah. to you, actually. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't was, even think. She's, as far as she's concerned, she's going to live forever. And you do have her for a while longer, so. Okay. Yeah. And she's healthy. So when she does go, it isn't going to be 
trauma around it, um, it will be quiet. So I'm connecting to our guides and guardians as well for you. You know, I'll hey, tell can you. I, can I just jump in here for one minute? When you say th that's such an important point you just brought up, she thinks she's going to live forever. And if if only we could all live like our dogs, they don't they don't worry about the future. They don't worry about the past. And this is one of the most significant things that we uh, one of the most significant lessons we can take from our animals. And I think that's why so many people with anxiety respond well to dogs. So many people who are stressed, so many people who are depressed. This is how we all should be living. We should be living like our dogs. And now that there's MRI studies that show um, we can now measure dogs emotions and we know they love us. They love us. We know they're connected to us. Um, one study shows they love us as much as they love hot dogs. Um, <laughs> but we, it, it's, it's just, it's remarkable. And we, we hear this all the time, but they live in the moment. And, and what, a, what a role model. What, what, that's exactly what every, any therapist will say is the one thing that people with anxiety need to do is one step at a time. And this is how they live. You know, it's interesting. When I was growing up, my mother always told me this story about my grandmother, how, how she had so much difficulty getting pregnant. And her physician told her to go out and get a dog. And interesting. you can mm. imagine what happened next. Yeah. <laughs> my mother was born. My mother adopted two kids first, and then she got pregnant. So I think that was a better, uh, that was a better idea. <laughs> Allison, just finally, we've been talking about our love of pets, and it is reflected in the billions of dollars that are spent on our pets annually. Maybe you can talk just a little bit about the return on investment. I know we'll go through some products later, some of the hot stuff that people are buying, but talk a little bit about that and the bond and how that's reflected in how much is spent on them. So, it, it, totally to your point that people now see their pet as a member of the family, and that reflects in how they shop. You know, people come in wanting to make, you know, <laughs> They give us so much love and care, we want to give that right back. And, and so they come in, they're well researched. It's all about, you know, what decisions can I make um, to bring joy to my pet's life, to give them the best possible nutrition um, or, you know, the best gear to, to make sure we're, we're getting out this winter. So um, it's just, uh, yeah, they're a member of the family and, and that's how people shop for them. <laughs> um, we had a dog recently, it was over Christmas, mommy needs to go to Pet Value. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm crazy. Like I got it because I questioned myself. And then I was like, there's a collar. There was like a specific collar that it wanted. And she goes, oh, I remember that collar because I picked it up and then I put it back. And I'm like, yeah, your dog wants to go get it. And the oh. dog's like, oh. And this is the joy of shopping with your pets, right? You know? Like that's that's something that oh, this yeah. generation. But they have their, their likes and their wants and needs too. So when you have your animal at a pet store, pay attention to where they're going. Pay attention to the physicality because that's part of animal communication. Let them shop. We we love it. Yeah. So, no, so does she like Yorkdale or Value Village? <laughs> all right. Yorkdale all the way. We, need, we need to take a quick break. Angel is up next with live pet readings. Do not go away. What's on your pet's mind? Well, Angel's here to reveal the secret, starting with the lovable pup, Mickey. But first of all, Stephen Mirando, my star director, is also with us. Tell us a little bit about Mickey. So Mickey's five years old. Uh, we actually got him just a year before the pandemic happened. So a year before the shutdown, we got him. He didn't really see a lot of people. So uh, turns out he has uh, quite a bit of anxiety when he sees uh, new people for the first time, and especially new dogs. Is there anything in particular you want to know about Mickey? Well, before we do that, I really like allowing the animal to speak first. Oh, So our hey. animals, sorry, no offense, but our animals don't get a chance to talk. So rather than you giving us that information first, let's go clean, right? So Mickey um, is, it's really interesting because this entire time that we've been connecting, you've been, he's been really nervous and scared. But as soon as the camera went on, it all went away. This dog belongs on Instagram. Um, this, this is the kind of dog who's actually really comfortable with the camera, really likes to be in front of the camera. I would really recommend, he says, bring me to work more. So we were saying earlier, this is a big day out for him, but he actually likes it here. Um, he likes being on camera. He like, look, like he's a total, and he's got the face for it. He definitely does. Um, he was talking to me earlier. He showed me a glimpse of food. Um, do you give him kibble, like the brown kibble? Yeah. Okay. Um, he likes that. Don't change it, please. Have you been thinking about changing it? Yeah, we've don't, changed it a few times. Yeah, don't change this one. This one's good. And he's like, he's like, huh, the last one was, huh. <laughs> and he's like, don't do that again. Um, he also likes the green treats. He what are the, the green treats? The greenies? Yeah, the greenies. Yeah, he, likes he likes those. Um, and he's showing me 
duck, duck, goose, choices. Are you in the midst of making some choices in your life right now? Yeah. Something about choices? Yeah. And, and I keep getting, you're going to land on the right one. So animals can tell us our future. Did you know that? Some no. animals can actually predict our future. Like I know one dog who actually said to me, um, she's going to get her tooth pulled. She's got to brush her teeth more. And within a week, her tooth started hurting. She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Her tooth started hurting. She went to the doctor and it was, it was like she had to have that a root canal. It was really interesting, and I'm like, whoa. So now I'm going to turn it over to you. Sure. What questions would you have for Mickey? I just would love to know, you know, what I can do to maybe limit his anxiety when we go out, and uh, especially on walks. Socialize more. Socialize like, more? I mean, I mean, really socialize. Walks are one thing, but this is a big crowd dog. Like, this is the kind of dog who does like to be on set, right? This is the kind of dog who does like to go to parties and socialize. So I would, and he's going. You need to have more people over. Yeah, you need to have more, more people, people over. over. So he's actually quite social. I think his anxiety is because he wants to be around people. That's what his anxiety is about. And also talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. When you're in a situation like this, because he's on the mental level of communication, your thoughts are really important. So what I say to people who own a dog like this is um, have imaginary conversations with him knowing they're not imaginary. Okay, so you need to talk to him more about where you're going. What are you doing? Where are we going today? Like, did you tell him that you were coming to the studio with him? I told him that he was coming to work with me today. Yeah. Okay, and how did he feel? Was he happy about that, like physically? At first he was very happy, and yeah. then we got in the car and he got a little nervous. Okay, too. so then you have to describe the studio. This is what it looks like. This is why we're going. This is, because sometimes he goes, I think I'm in trouble. I think he's, and there are times too when he thinks you're trying to trick him and we're actually going to the vet. Right. So, <laughs> you, yeah, okay, so you have that relationship. No more tricking. He goes, do you promise? And I said, yeah, so no more tricking. Okay, I won't okay? trick you anymore. Direct, direct, direct. If you're going to the vet, tell them you're going to the vet, but it's okay because this is what we're doing today. Right. Okay? All right, let's give it up for our lovable pup, Mickey. Okay, well, there are quite a few people in our audience that I think are maybe wondering if, if you have something to share with them. So I'll turn it over to you. Are okay. you reading any pets from any members of the audience? Right I am. Now? Is it okay if I stand? Because stand up. Okay, yes, great. Your thing. So I'm excited to be here. Are you guys excited to be here? Oh my God, you guys are so awesome. You have a beautiful energy. So the energy I have is very conducive to the people around me. This staff is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much from the crew to the beautiful host. Um, I really want to pick on you. I know you don't want to be picked on, but I'm going to pick on you, okay? So with you particularly, I keep seeing horses around you. Um, did you grow up with horses? I had a horse as a teenager. Yeah, and it's really interesting because that horse still remembers you, but you are horsewoman. You are mm -hmm. like animal goddess. That is the only thing, and they love you. When you pass, which won't be now, when you pass, there's a place in heaven for you with all animals. Okay? Everyone says that to me. Yeah. They yeah. said, there's a place in doggy heaven for you. As soon heaven. as I sat down, our eyes locked. And I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable. Weird chick <laughs> okay. looking at me. Um, but you particularly have this incredible kind of Rhiannon, who is the goddess of the horses, Rhiannon energy. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. But you're not placating to it enough. Okay, so that's your, <laughs> I, he just he goes, yep, yep. Um, so it's really interesting because volunteer. If you want, just volunteer. Do something that'll connect you and reconnect you because without it, you're not, it's not about you're not healthy, but it keeps you healthier. I've had some injuries, Yeah. but my plan was for this spring to good. start riding again. Good, good. Just be around animals, okay? And volunteer in shelters. I keep seeing something about shelters as well. Your energy is as healing to the animals as it is to you. So you need to just sit with animals if you can, okay? Um, there was somebody else I wanted to, you. Um, do you have a dog? Yes. Okay, what's your dog's name? Uh, there's three. There's panda. The big one. The big one. Uh, panda. Panda. Okay, so that's the one that kind of looks huskyish. Uh, it's like, like a it's palm, white and he's, okay, yeah, but it looks husky. It's black yes. and white. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this dog thinks it's way bigger than it is. Yes. Way bigger than it is. Yeah. But it matches your personality. Yes. Yeah. 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 You two are so symbiotic. I love it. Um, she's like, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. That's me. And the other one's totally cool with that. But the other one sometimes. What's the other one's name? So the, there's Callie the, the, and the blonde Toddy. one. The blonde one. The blonde one. A toddy. Toddy, Sorry, the little one, the foster one. Yeah, tiny. okay, so the blonde one. Yeah. I just need more time. Give yes. me more time. So it just wants more time. Yes. Okay. Yes. What's your name? Me? Yeah. Oh, Siri. You're awesome. Oh, Siri you. is your name? Yeah, um, you yeah. and I have the same spirit animal. So I'm different than other animal communicators. Oh, wow. I can tap into your spirit animal, the essence of who you are. You and I are the same. We're snake. Oh. The snake is all about feel. Oh, yeah. Ew. Listen to you people. It's beautiful. <laughs> Snakes are healing. If you look at the medical community, the cardusis, right? Mm -hmm. The snake is beautiful, and the snake is all about communication. The snake is all about feel. Don't be so scared of your feel. 
Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Okay, because I know you're really sensitive, but you're also tactile, and you need to fall into that more. Don't be so afraid of it. Okay, follow your feel. All right. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so All right. much, everybody. Let's give it up for Angel. We'll be right back with more. Stay tuned. Canadians enthusiastically invest over $8 billion on their pets every year, and a big chunk of that goes to pet tech. Here with us is Alison Priest from Pet Value to show us what's really selling, because yes, our pets are getting their own cool gadgets now, and who said tech was just for humans? I mean, it is for humans because it makes our lives easier, but it also makes our pets' lives uh, a little bit more fun, too. Okay, so show us what you got. What, what, what's this one? Right, because we were talking about this, you couldn't quite guess what this was. No, I, it looks like a scale for pets. What if I hold it like that? A mirror? It's a pet door, but, <laughs> but I know it should be in a door, right? Um, but it's automatic. So um, it comes with a little radio frequency tag that you put on your pet's collar. So your pet can go in and out. So it's going to make, and it's also going to make sure things like raccoons don't come inside your house because it oh. only opens for your pet. It's like a garage door opener. <laughs> so they can let themselves out. They can let into themselves the backyard. in and out. Exactly. Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's also, it helps with energy efficiency as well because it's only going to be open and closed when they're, they're serious about their business. Okay, good to know. <laughs> All right, and how about this one? Okay, so this is an automatic scooping cat litter box. Like, I, I feel like with the doctor here, I need the, the actual stats on, on how many people hate scooping the litter, but I bet it's a pretty substantial amount. So this is a really cool product. These crystals um, are designed so you have a sheet of it and you only need to replace it every couple weeks, depending on your cat, um, and it's automatically scooping. So it takes all the waste out, moves it there, and then you just need to um, empty it at your So your a couple things I noticed is one, you mentioned the crystals. They don't, they aren't chalky. They don't make your hands dusty. No. And is there an odor? We were, we were like, what smells so good? It's this. <laughs> now, how about when the pet does their business mm. and it, and it gets trapped in the door and you don't change it for a couple of weeks, as you mentioned, does that start to smell? <laughs> so definitely the crystal has an order absorbing, um, element to it, but yeah, you do want to, you do want to clean out, uh, when it's done, it's, it's scooping, uh, on a fairly regular basis. Okay. I would suggest. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. All right. And this next one here, what's this called? So this is a pet fountain, specifically more for cats. Like if you've had a cat, you know, they, they typically like to hang out around your faucet, your faucet if you're lucky. They sit on the kitchen counter. <laughs> exactly, because cats really like running water. Yeah. Um, so this is a fountain specifically meant for cats and it's gonna have a continuous stream of running water there. And how long do you have to refill it? I mean, this is a pretty big bowl. It's gonna hold a fair amount of water. Um, there's usually a filtration system in them as well. We have, a, we have a lot of models like this. So it's fresh water. It's fresh water, it tastes good. Only it's the best cats, for our cats. Cats are picky, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say so. Um, okay, and then what about these guys here? So these are really cool. And you know, if every house was lucky and they had an angel living with them, they'd be able to communicate exactly what they wanted. In the meantime, at Pet Value, the people at, uh, at Spot have, uh, have introduced these buttons. So you can program these. I've gone ahead and programmed them already with some common phrases that you can train your pet to communicate with. Okay, let's so give it a try. Treats, please. That's going to be a very popular one in my home. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Rodney? Oh, yeah. We'd be, we'd be broke. <laughs> and so the pets are trained to know when they step Treats, on this. They, they mean business. I mean, I, I'm probably going to be like, okay, tricks for treat, but, but yeah, I understand what you're looking for. What if they step on all three? What does this one say? Outside. 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 Time to go potty. That's when they go through that door. Exactly. It's Around that one. Um, I believe that was cuddles, please. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and just finally, what have we got here? So this, so if you have a hyperactive kitty, um, this is going to help them with that hunting uh, um, instinct. So if you turn on the top button, but be careful, it's a little wild. Oh, so not only do we a have an LED light in there, um, it's also going to have a, a wild pattern. Um, so it actually moves on its own if you put it down on the table. You there. can just picture a cat going wild after this. It's a bit of a disco, like a, a, like a disco for one, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so good. All right, Allison, this has been very, very amazing. Thank you very much for coming and bringing in all these products. And here's a special treat for our audience, too. One person is taking home a $100 pet value gift card found under your chair. So take a look. Pick up your chairs. Yeah. 
Congratulations, but that is not all. Everyone is getting a free dog wash at Pet Value Stores with their convenient self-serve dog wash station. Congratulations to everyone. We'll be right back with more after this break. Welcome back, everyone. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. So we're opening the floor to your questions, and we're kicking things off with Connie. Hey, Connie. Hi. What's your question? In a multi-generational household, does a pet have a favorite, or does it recognize a particular number one owner? Who would like to take this one on? It can. Um, I find with animals, in general, they always have their person. Uh, and then it's kind of like a hierarchy, right? Like in a pack or a tribe or something like that. Uh, but for me, when I talk to an animal, a lot of times they're hesitant in saying that because they love everybody, right? So when you have a multi-generational home, it also depends on the animal. If it's a very independent female animal, they may tend towards mom. If it's an older animal, they might tend towards grandpa, right? If it's a puppy, who are they gonna tend towards, right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But Thank you. if you're the one with the good treats, you can really yeah. shake things up. Right. Makes sense. There you so. go. Stubbery <laughs> works in every species. You are Harlow's person. I am, but in other homes, when somebody gets ill, a dog can change who their person is. Mm -hmm. They can certainly make that change depending on what's going on. But yes, I am Harlow's person. Dr. Daly, is there any science to this? Well, I, I have a Labrador retriever, so I will go with whoever gives the most affection and the most, <laughs> the most food. But there, it's very interesting because if you were to ask anybody, uh, Pat, I have a yellow lab called Paddington, and Paddington is my dog. She is my dog. But for some reason, she gravitates toward my husband. And I think that there are just different, different personalities. And um, the one thing that we do know about dogs, and again, I just keep going back to this because it's so important. There's this big misunderstanding that dogs are pack animals and they aren't pack animals. There was a misunderstanding that wolves are pack animals and they're not pack animals. They're social animals. And so dogs are members of the family. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think the reason she gravitates toward my husband is he treats her like a dog. Um, you know, I treat her like a baby and I, you know, cuddle her and want her to do what I want her to do. And so we just need to keep in mind that when we're um, when we're taking care of our, our animals, they again, there are children, there are there are family members. And so just like the dynamics, I think, with certain children and I, I don't like to say favorites, but it's just you get different things from um, different people. She, she'll snuggle with me. She will, um, you know, she'll w prefer to go for walks with my husband on certain times. And, and there's, it, it's, it really varies. And I think it's based on personality. I, I really believe it's based on personality. All right, Connie, thank you for your question. <laughs> Welcome to the round table. What's your question? Uh, well, I just want to come on TV and tell the world that uh, my girlfriend stole my cat. <laughs> Uh, the question is really, um, my cat and I lived together for a little while at my house, and then she moved in for two years, lived at my house, and then we moved to her house, and I see the, her change in her behavior where she'll now go to her all the time for everything instead of me. And I was just wondering if it was me that did something, or, or like, did, did I give her too many tombstones? Or so, something as soon like as, or? so as soon as we got in the studio and I saw you, I'm like, I have to read this guy, I really want, and I didn't think I was gonna get an opportunity. So I'm so happy you're here. Um, this particular cat loves you, but it's actually, again, it's interesting we're talking about smell. It's the way she smells, it's the way she, it's just who she is, it is her personality. It has nothing to, you've done, <laughs> I just started, you've done nothing wrong. <laughs> you've done nothing wrong. Um, this particular cat also is leaning more towards the feminine because she's always had you. So that's that's all it is, right? It has nothing to do with anything else because this dog, this dog, this cat really does care. Did you have a dog at some point? Uh, when I was a kid. Okay, because yeah. that dog came through for you earlier, just so you know, and says you're the best daddy ever. So don't ever think for a second, and this is all of you guys, that you're not a good pet parent just because it leans towards another person eventually. Okay. Right? Still she treats, loves, though. 
Still treats them. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, Francesca, welcome to the round table. What's your thank question? Thank you. Hello, everybody. We had two dogs in the last 30 years, and we have very special bonds. I don't know what it is, maybe the personality or the energy, and they were just like kids to us, like they were our kids. We have a daughter too, but... Um, <laughs> just on a but, side note. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my question is, pet therapy for long-term um, homes. Why don't we have more of these? So Micah and I actually visit a long-term care facility every Friday. And it absolutely changes, not just for the residents, but also for the staff. Yes. And so when we're not there, so I hear about it. I hear about it from the residents. Where were you Where last you? week? Yeah. Why weren't you, you here? Yeah. And so, you know, and also to recognize that especially for in long-term care facilities and especially for those who are really, um, you know, kind of battling health issues, they have good days and have bad days. So even though we only go on a Friday, there'll be some Fridays where the residents who normally would be so happy to see us doesn't want to see us. And so we just have to, you know, what we found is that, you know, we go with the flow, we go with the day, but the difference. I'm gonna bring in Dr. Daly because I see you nodding your head and wanting to speak uh, here. I have so much to say about this and let me just go from a starting point. I, I mean, I'm a university professor, so I work with young people. Um, I did start uh, our, our local chapter of a therapy dog program. I used to assess dogs for um, Therapeutic Paws of Canada. Um, people are not doing enough volunteer work. And you, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said we need more of this. Uh, I, I saw it was there's a new movie that just came out a documentary it's been out for a couple of months called uncharitable and in fact um, donations and volunteer work hasn't hasn't increased over the years and it should so I've I used to get people who would say oh I'd love to visit with my dog I'd love to visit with my dog what do I need to do I said you just need to come in for two hours and let me assess your dog and make sure okay nine out of ten times people don't follow through and I I say to people the 30 minutes a day you're spending online, maybe just spend a couple of hours you know, doing some volunteer work in your community. Go visit your the local Alzheimer's society. My mother's having some dementia issues right now. And when I bring my dog there and my brother has a new puppy, it, it's exactly the change is, is formidable. All right. Here's to the incredible bond we share with our pets, and that is it for us this evening. To get in touch, you can send us an email at comments at thezoomer.com. As always, thank you to my panel and to you at home. We'll see you soon. For now, it's time to zoom out.